I'm Professor Dean Tost. I'm a faculty in the Department of Chemistry at the University of California, Berkeley, where I've been there for a little over 20 years. So CCAS, uh, the acronym is, stands for the Center for Computational Assisted Synthesis. It's a, an NSF-funded center that brings together researchers from fields of computer science and largely uh, synthetic organic chemistry, bringing these people together to leverage the tools of computer science to address problems in, in chemical synthesis. So it's aimed at furthering the goals of chemical synthesis uh, using the tools of of modern data science and, and uh, machine learning and AI and, and computer assisted. Traditionally, my lab has been focused on experimental organic synthesis, what some people might call wet chemistry, you know, making things. Yeah, making the actual things, conducting the actual uh, organic reactions. And so that process that we've been doing, as I said, for in my lab for over 20 years has been largely uh, focused on sort of hypothesis-driven empirical experiments to uh, get us to the results we want. And the role that CCAS and actually data science in general has, has played in that process is we could leverage those tools to those processes. We started doing that in a collaboration with Professor Matt Sigma at the University of Utah, who's also a CCAS member, almost a decade ago, using those, those tools to understand and optimize reactions. In that initial collaboration, a lot of the data that was used to build the models came out of my lab. And so my role in CCAS continues, I think, as an experimental chemist to, on some level, provide the context and the problems uh, for which those tools can be applied, but also to provide the data that would then drive those. Uh, I think, you know, the initial one was a system that we had been studying and we had some data that we were building on to try to understand how that system worked using basically tools of data science, you know, regression modeling and things like this. In the years uh, subsequent to that, uh, as you said, the tools have gotten, more tools have been imported from computer science into chemistry that we now have access to, has allowed us to do both within CCAS and other projects that aren't part of CCAS, is to attack increasingly complex problems. For example, Casper, who's a currently a postdoc in my group, is developing reagents for selective modification of amino acid residues in, in proteins. And so proteins are very complex. And so, but now with the modern tools, we're starting to think about that large amount of data that you get from modifying proteins. It's amenable to the tools that have been developed now. And we wouldn't have necessarily thought about that 10 years ago. And now we're thinking about these much more complex systems. That, in large part, is because of things like CCAS, and being talking to data science people and computer science people who say, yeah, well, that's not too much data for us to look at. In fact, we like that, that much, so much data, where early on when you know, there's a wall between chemistry and data science, um, our data sets were smaller, manageable for a chemist. Now, because of CCAS and, and the influx of tools from data science into chemistry, we can attack increasingly complex problems. For me, as a person who develops new reaction development, one of the gaps that still remains is uh, what one might call like transfer learning, right? Where you could, you could take um, you know, existing data sets and actually create something new from that is not in the existing data. So go beyond your regression model to something new. And so I think um, with the brain power in CCAS and the creativity of the people in CCAS, we can hopefully make a dent in sort of inventing new things rather than just optimizing existing things. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, you know, within the context of meetings like the one we're having this week, uh, where we all gather together, that's been a constant topic of we um, go to that goal of creating uh, new reactions or something new rather than uh, optimizing and predicting. Um, and I think there's lots of ideas that are uh, thrown around. I think it's CCAS has a role to play in that because the experimentalists talk to the computer scientists. So in order to do that, I think, as you, we, I think you alluded to earlier, you need someone to validate those predictions. And so you can predict the new reaction, but someone's going to have to try it. And, and someone's going to have you data to validate and optimize your model. So I do think it's not, it's not something we can do now, but I think CCAS is positioned well to have us fill that gap of um, you know, predicting new reactions. And I, I think that's important, right, because predicting new reactions enables you know, new chemistry and, and uh, new ways to make molecules. And of course, making molecules has impact on society all over the place. So my opinion is, and, you know, obviously I have, uh, I'm biased in this that chemistry is a, a central science and always has to understanding things like biology and physics, you always tend to go back to, to chemistry. And, 
And so if, if you, you, know, you hold that point of view and, and think of chemistry not as an end to itself, but as the central science to impact a whole lot of things, then, then a center is the perfect place to make that happen, right? Because you know, it's not just a chemistry center, it's a chemistry center with computer scientists, there's pharmaceutical companies involved, there's, there's a wide range of topics. So as a young student, I would say like, this is an exciting opportunity to take your knowledge of chemistry as the central science and see how far it can reach into, into different domains. And that's a really unique part of the center. So if I was giving advice to a young student going in there is, if, you, if you're lucky enough to be part of a center that participate in things like these meetings where you can talk face to face with people doing uh, the wide range of topics that you can do in a center that you couldn't do if you're an individual person, because that, that interface between those fields and this central science of chemistry is where a lot of the innovation and impact will happen. So this is a unique opportunity to take advantage of that and position yourself to make those impacts in the future. Uh, one is, is a person impact, the people impact, where, uh, as we were just discussing, people that are part of this center will be trained with a unique and, and to a large part, new perspective on how to do science and how to think about problems. And those people will spread out into the community, uh, whether it's the computer science community or the chemistry community, whether it's the academic community or pharmaceutical or industrial community, whether they're starting a startup in computer science, they'll, they'll, they'll spread out um, and, and take what they've learned in terms of knowledge of how to do science, how to conduct science, how to do hypothesis-driven stuff, how to build models, all that stuff they'll, they'll take with them. And so that impact is quite large if you think about uh, the connectivity between people into society, right? So you, if you train people to think a certain way, that they take that thinking with them on society. And then the other one is you know, a much more tangible one, which is you know, the tools I think that are being developed and the ideas that are being developed in, in CCAS. We can already see a lot of companies using them to make things like to make medicines quicker. Um, um, you can see companies like Dow you know, using them to formulate their products um, more efficiently and with better properties, right? So I think uh, there'll be a tangible impact of this new way of a, a computer computational chemist, a data science chemist that goes out and can think about computer science as a way to make molecules. And then of course, as I've already said, like it's chemistry cent central to so many things that there will be a societal impact on that. Like we can make greener materials more efficiently. We can uh, incorporate life cycle analysis into our data science workflow to make sure that the impact on the environment is less when we're making these compounds. So there'll be, I think, tangible societal impacts that these products will have in the way we conduct chemistry and then intangible outcomes from the people that are part of the center who now have a, a different way of thinking about doing science. And they'll of course take that with them and train other people to do that. So there'll be, these two impacts are, I think are very big, important and big, yeah.